Real Life Homeowner Association Professionals, the HOA Pros Podcast. All right, welcome everybody. Week two, the HOA Pros Podcast. I'm your co host, Mike Perloff with Fenton Grant Law Firm. And I'm Kara with Keystone. And we have some epic guests. I was joking with Kara. This is like, do you guys watch Joe Rogan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is like having on two Elon Musk. Oh, I <laughs> We're starting week two with a major bang. It's right. epic. <laughs> so um, we have Charles Antis, founder, CEO. What's your position? What's the actual? Founder name? and CEO. Founder and CEO of Antis I Ruby. I want to be called the chief storyteller, but that's Ooh. not quite been accepted yet. I actually yeah. like that. I think you yeah. should definitely put in some paperwork to get that okay. changed. Right. <laughs> and we have Wing Lamp. Yep, co-founder of Wahoo's Fish Taco. And they're amazing. They are amazing. I, I eat Wahoo's all the time. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes. awesome. Well, we're so excited to have you guys. Um, as you know, Karen and I are super involved in the HOA industry. And we're here to pick your brains all about how you got started, where you come from, uh, what you're up to these days. And uh, we want all of your stories when you have to have. I mean, got a few. <laughs> got a few stories. We want to know the secret ingredients. Yes. Oh, right. If there's yeah. any, uh, <laughs> yeah. And where we can, we can find the recipes, of course. <laughs> and Charles, all of your stuff, man. Um, super excited. So, um, Kara, do you kind of want to start us off? With yeah, so um, I think maybe we, I'm yeah. sure some of the stories will cross over, sure. but I'd love to hear just kind of where it all started for you. I mean, obviously where it started to get you to today, you know, we, we'd love to hear, you know, where you were born and raised a little bit. I think that you have sure. a, a wing, you have a great story about that, but let's start with Charles and just how did we get here today, Charles? Well, I tell you, I was born and raised in Oregon, so it's a long way from here. But, but those some things happen in your youth that draw me to people like you and Wing today. And you know, I remember growing up in a small town. Every man I knew worked in forest products. He either worked in the lumber mill, the plywood mill, or if he was the manliest of many, worked as a logger. And that's kind of how it was. But I remember like an early impression. That's how you're growing your beard out. And dude, I see this. I have this. I love wearing like logging type clothes, you know, I guess today. But, but, but I was really drawn to this one man I remember at, at the parade when I was a little kid, the Wooden Nickel Day Parade. It was the biggest event in town. And the guy was John Shercliffe from the Shell Oil Company. And he would be the, at the end of the parade. And he would be handing out dimes, which was a lot of money back in 1968, no 70. And, and he was handing out toys and he would look at us when he handed it to us in a way that maybe some of the other men were too busy to notice. And I remember thinking back now, I don't the thoughts didn't cross my mind then, but looking back now, I know I wanted to be him. Oh, it's yes. not that I didn't want that, but I didn't necessarily want to suffer and toil through my work. But that's what I ended up doing when I came to Southern California. I ended up in Southern California on a sales job, and I was selling insulation door to door. How old? Really? I was 20, 21, 20. 21. And I always wanted to live in SoCal. I never wanted to live in a small town. I appreciate it now, but back then, you know, I just wanted to live in SoCal. And so there I was selling door to door. I sold this deaf family. They were deaf insulation. And it was really cool. I was learning the sign. I was kind of flirting with their cute daughter. I remember who was like 17. And then the next day, in went, sign language, yes. in sign point, yeah. lots was, of pointing and heart fingers. I was a fast study that day. Let me yeah, tell you. I bet. You're but like, the yeah, next yeah. day, huh. yeah, the next day, I went back to pick up the check, and I knocked on the door, and they didn't answer. And I saw the father. No, they didn't hear me. I knocked again, and then I thought he looked at me, but he still didn't answer. And that shocked me. And then I felt footsteps on the porch and it was the neighbor and she told me to get off the property. And I asked why and she said, because you're selling them something that they can't possibly achieve. And I looked at what she was saying and... Because they can't afford it? Or uh, because... it just, they weren't going to get the savings on the insulation. What the spend wasn't going to justify. Okay. The, the, it wasn't going to be justified, the spend. And, and I, I hadn't heard that before, but here was a woman who had analyzed the evidence, who was looking at this family and trying to protect them, and I was on the wrong side of that deal. Interesting. Because you're trying to keep them warm or oh, cold? I was or just what? trying to make money. He was trying I, to make a deal. Oh, I, I, didn't, I, mean, I didn't think about the product and how it affected the client yet. I wasn't sophisticated enough, but that day I did and I quit my job. 
And so here I was in Southern California, 21 years old, no job, and, and the sales thing didn't work out, so what do I do? I think what I can do is I can work with my hands, I can do labor, I can mow lawns if I have to, that's what a man does. And the only job I saw in the landscape was for a roofing company. And so I took that job, and that was 1984, the Summer Olympics of 84, Oh, wow. And that was the first job the first job I got. And that's how I got into it. But I love that you acknowledge at such a young age that what you were doing, even though it resulted in a paycheck, wasn't where your heart was. And I think a lot of people really um, can't divide what is my heart calling me to do, but I also need to put food on the table for my family. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, I personally, I've been hustling since I was 10 and working at hot dog carts, selling door to door, but I want to do something where my heart is happy, but I also want it to pay the bills. Right. So yeah, and you can't reconcile that when and now when I think of that family now, oh, you know, there's a little bit of a, I can't. That was a great experience because I decided right then that's never going to happen to me again, and right. and, I, and I believe I live to that today. You know, yeah. I, I believe yeah. that we live to the spirit of that today, which means that we're, our customer care is going to be perfect. And you can live to the spirit of that. So, those, so I, don't, I don't want to say I wish it didn't happen. I'm glad it happened. I, I wish that family, uh, the daughter, or not the daughter, because that's <laughs> right. uh, they, they listened to this uh, yeah. podcast and they would hear, oh, yeah, that guy, yeah. oh. He, knew he wasn't trying to rip us off. He quit his job that day. Right. That would be awesome. Well, and Wayne, you were nodding. So share with us that you were, you were, you were nodding about... You following your heart, yeah. and it's it, like you said. I, I thought he. I was far away from home, right? Oregon. I'm all the way from Brazil, getting here. Right. But the whole thing is like you know, I, my family's always been in the restaurant, so it's kind of funny. There's two kinds of tools. He's good with hammers and nails, which I can't use. I'm really good with kitchen tools, which I'm pretty sure he can't do. Okay. But those are the things, right? So around my wife Kelly, all the time we always have this argument. I can't believe you can't fix that. Because I don't know how to use those little tools. Right? They're just not my thing. I know how to use these tools, but not those tools, right? Well, tell us about Brazil, because that's actually really surprising to me. I'm really, like, when you told me that, I was like, wow. Yeah, how really... old were you when you got to yeah. Brazil? Were I mean, you moved, born in Brazil? I was born and raised in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Then we moved to a small town. So we have a lot of similarities. Okay. We, we were the only Chinese family in the little town that we grew up in. So there were a lot of other Asian kids, but they're all of other descendants. Sure. But so it wasn't like so people ask me goes, how come you don't celebrate Chinese New Year's? It was well because I never knew when it was because oh, there was not even like this oh. parade. Uh, like he had a parade, we had didn't have a parade. Not in the little town we were in. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff that is traditional to the Chinese culture that I have no idea what they're talking about because I didn't have it. I was Brazilian, and we celebrated the Brazilian soccer and all the other things, right? Oh, that's right. awesome. So, but one of the funny things is, as a kid, I always wanted to, like, be a pilot. And again, in Portuguese, wing doesn't mean anything other than a Chinese name. Oh, okay. But in America, it's a part of an airplane, right? Which kind of made sense later, right? But yeah. I ended up in the wrong school because I figured if I can't be a pilot, because I realized... I took a lot of flying class in high school. There's a lot of note taking, yes. very precise, the logbook before you fly, it before you fly, before, after you fly. There's a lot of paperwork. I'm ah, not good with it. <laughs> That's my struggle. Yeah. I feel like I could physically fly it. Like, yeah. put me in the driver's seat. Sure. Right? But don't make Give me an ultralight. Yeah. 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 Put sure all the paperwork, right? right? The right. walking. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, you're out of your mind, right? I love so, it. but I figure, you know what? My, in, the, in the Asian family, there were the, I call it the traditional careers. Sure. So doctor is a very top one. Attorney is number two. The third one is an engineer. So I'm like, hey, the other two are already taken by my older brothers. Okay. I'm going to do this, you know, engineer, aerospace engineer. Wow. But I ended up at the wrong school because it's very hard to attend classes when you go to San Diego State. Oh, oh yes. yeah. We know, right? we know. And that's oh, where I know Matt Craig Stevens, right? Perfect weather. You're right next to the beach. <laughs> and everybody says, what are you doing going to class? You know, we should go to happy hour. Uh, we should be going right. to that. To so, the beach. Does San Diego right. State still have that reputation even to this day? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, they have I've been to. out of the game it's for a It's always perfect. Proximity. Yeah. Proximity. Yeah. You're it's... trying to go to the office and the sun's beating on <laughs> you. The waves are crashing. Right. Oh, a lot it. of distraction. Yeah. So I found myself joining a fraternity okay. and on academic probation at the oh, same wow. time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I ended up going, you know what? What are all these other guys that I didn't think were that smart? They're like, they're all in the business school. I'm like, you know what? 
that's where I'm going to go because so I ended up with a degree in finance. Oh, oh no. So it was pretty cool, you know, numbers still, but you can be more yeah. creative. Okay. So yep. I did that, and then of all things, I made my parents proud. I, I did get a job yep. out of college at Rockwell International okay. on the space shuttle program. So really? on the business side of it, so it was kind of like, okay. So we're checking kind of all the boxes. The boxes did it. Yep. And, you know, I worked for another couple of companies after that. You know, it was fun. But then my kid brother Ed was getting out and say, hey, and I say, you know what, corporate America is not really cut out for us, sure. right? And, and we talk about, you know, the imaginary glass ceiling, right? It was kind of there because aerospace is a predominantly white industry. Okay. So I'm like, you know what, not, a, you know, not as much fun as I thought it would be, right? Nothing against it, but just not as much fun. So I said, hey, what do we know how to do? And my brother goes, hey, we know how to do restaurants. It was yeah. right. We grew up inside of one. You did. So I said, well, what is anybody doing out here? Because the one thing you learn in business school, find a little, like, you know, place for fish. Right, right, right. So I'm like, hey, nobody's doing fish tacos. And we kind of like surfing. We're, we like this. Let's do it. Yeah. How did it start? Was, did you start with a full-blown restaurant? Or yeah. You did? A full, back then, wow. there were no food carts like okay, there today. Okay. Uh, so we started the very first one in Costa Mesa. And I laugh about it all the time because... Most of the guys work with my kid brother because I was already in college. Okay. So all the guys that didn't go to college or whatever have to work with him. But they all remember, luckily we kept different last names because of immigration. Okay. So our real last name is Lee, but I changed to Lamb when we immigrated and I never went back. Okay. So everybody didn't realize that we were brothers. And you know it's cool. one of those, you either love somebody or you hate somebody. For some reason, Nobody really liked my brother, like whatever it was, because he either worked too hard or didn't like go along with everything that the shenanigans I call it. Right, so he's a little more serious yeah. and you're out. Yeah, so, you know, so all the people never put the two and two together that we were actually blood brothers. Interesting. They just thought we That's worked together. That's cool though. I like yeah. that because... You know, you, they don't know. So yeah. you kind of have yeah. this secret. Yeah. Um, and even to this day, they still go, are you guys like real blood brothers? And yes. you guys still work together. We still work together. Amazing. Yeah. That's so and cool. is it the, the same one in Costa Mesa on Bristol and Baker? That's the third location. Oh, it's okay. the one over by Hope Hospital is where oh, we started. Oh, I just started. Okay. Yeah. That's so so awesome. we, and then my kid brother Mingo was behind the scenes because we needed somebody to do the paperwork. He was still going to UCI. So we kept him from going to law school because he had <laughs> gotten accepted. And he said, hey, maybe you should stick around. So the three of us kind of got the ball rolling. And, and how old were you at that stage? I think I was 26 like still 20, right? or 27. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. Young. So you and I have a mutual friend we found out. Oh, yeah. Shout Craig out Stevens. to Craig Stevens. Love Craig. <laughs> Mr. <a> Buffalo. <laughs> He's a legend. And so he, rumor has that the fish tacos are influenced from surf trips yes. down in, in Baja. Okay, that's yeah, true. You, if the surf trips and the San Felipe trips, the fraternity spring break trips. Nice. Legendary because we would drink lots of Pacifico beer because it's cheap. <laughs> yep. Literally, for five bucks, you get a case. Right. And unlimited amounts of fish tacos because they're literally 50 cents a piece. Yep. So on a college So it's day, true. Amazing. Because Craig true. Stevens told me that. I was like, you don't know, yeah. Wing. There's no <laughs> way. I, I gave him a hard time. I'm like, you don't. He goes, oh, I swear I was on that surf trip when he, <laughs> when he found out the topic. <laughs> like, that's what I say about you. You know, Mike Perloff knows everyone. Yeah. And we, we've just said that many times. And Think, you know, thankful to you for making today happen. I mean, I can't think of a better way to start our guest speakers on our Two podcast. Two Elons and one. I agree. <laughs> and, and the people, energy's high. I mean, you've got 30 years of Wahoos and 30 years of Antis. I mean, I'm seeing all of our tchotchkes here in our uh, studio. And 30 years, I mean, how incredible to have, I mean, we've seen... Um, economies dip and we've seen we're now in a pandemic and the two of you are sitting here with your success and I would love to talk about I mean we talked about how you got here where you came from but how do you continue growing as a company and pivoting as things come your way especially in the midst of a pandemic I know we've probably beat the COVID horse to death but I think you know I don't know that I've ever seen anything like this in my lifetime I don't think that you have and so I'm sure that there was a, po- a point maybe about a year ago when you thought, wow, what are we going to do? Especially in the restaurant industry. What are we going to have to do different? Yeah, I would say the construction got a hit, but I don't think it lasted more than a few months maybe because yeah. everybody was just scared to go out. Right. But once right. they figured out that they're outside working, it wasn't as bad. We got hit because people were afraid to go in. 
Right. So right. immediately I started making a few deliveries because we had excess product that was going to perish anyway. And then this turkey here calls me and I'm like, this is perfect because I know he's not doing anything right now. And then I, I took a guess because all of my event friends, everybody was sitting around. I know, that got so, really scary for events. Yeah, every yeah time our, our habitat builds were shut down. The Meals of Love, we couldn't do at Ronald McDonald yeah. House. Virtually all of the nonprofit show up things weren't happening the, the the luncheons all the breakfast everything was off so that's how yeah that's what i call yeah, it yeah i we talked and then we, he was literally waiting to, for us to open one of our stores and they, we had to change the hours because we're not that busy anymore sure. but i said hey what are you doing and charles what do you mean what am i doing this hey we got a delivery at the local hospital he goes you're out of your mind because why everybody's got a mask, everybody got face shields. We'll have you completely covered. We keep our distance, and everybody drives separately. So we're, we're doing this thing, right? Yeah. He says, "Once you come out," and I think it took a couple of them. And by the time we got to chalk, I think you know Charles can tell the best story because I didn't realize that that's what's happening. But all of a sudden, the light bulb went off. Well, but yeah, when he well when 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 Wayne called, you know, Wayne's been there for me. You know, he's been there as a mentor for five years. I have quotes on my board. You know, my board and my yeah, office. Yeah, in your office. You know, and so that but but him being there for me also is he calls and says, hey, let's do this, and and it's hard sometimes, you know, to say yes because it's scary. It's something sure. different. It's outside of the norm. Right. But I'd have that. I'd had that experience with him and it's always benefited us and it's always benefited me personally because wing likes to go out and help nonprofits and stuff so when he called me to do this and when i realized it was the front line people that are protecting us that sounds really obvious now but a year ago that's really new well that's what i was going to say so the world is shifting and 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 everything's going crazy and naturally your instinct is let me look inward and and make sure that the things that i'm running my business my family are safe and protected and I think it's so impressive that you guys looked outward and said, wait a second, let's, let's see how we can, you know, go outside our little home and, and keep doing all these great things and keep things up in the midst of a pandemic. Right. Well, I was pinching myself. I do remember. I, this is what I do when I'm uncomfortable with a board. If I have a crazy board member, you know, going off and I have to Wait, maintain the norm. You know what I mean. Crazy board member, no. you know <laughs> what I, mean. I mean, the way I handle it is I have my hand right here and I pinch my hip. And it's just a way to remind myself to stay in the moment and not have to get engaged. But, but because I trust Wing, I want to say yes. But because I don't understand what he's asking, I'm pinching myself. And that's kind of the way it starts. But when I show up, and you know, like, like you said, I don't quite see it until maybe the third drop. Like you said, it's a chalk. And that's where my children, Charlie and Gracie, were right. born. That's where I was there every day, skin on skin. And all those nurses shared with me those tips that would help us in bringing them home. You know, And then all of a sudden, it hit me. Oh, my God. We're bringing this food yeah. and all this other stuff. Lots of stuff. Lots of great partners to right. those nurses and those staff and those doctors and with a big smile and when they come out because what we know now is they've been working doubles oh, yeah, a yeah. lot and sometimes yeah. triples right. and 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 they came out and they're tired and sometimes that reef that pause that they know we we care it meant so much it meant so much it meant so much to our people and that's when i think i had that moment where i felt alive again you know, and I need that. I'm that CEO that needs that because I know that my people need to know that we're making a difference in the world. And if the habitat, we're still yeah. donating all the habitat roofs. We donated seven or eight roofs last year. We're still helping with Ronald McDonald House. We've raised ten million thanks to Wings helping us wow. now too. He's rocking the socks with us. Yeah. But but in addition, but in addition to doing that, we're also Wings helping us get blood every week. Wings there at Antis Roofing. We do our blood drives. You know, we've nice. we've been delivering food, but mostly. We were showing up. We just did our 200th drop on Saturday. Wing was on Channel 5. And you said that story. We're storytellers, by the way, you know. And Wing told that story. You get like 15 seconds to say it on TV. But he said it twice. He said it's so perfect that, you know... What are we doing? He got we got all together in the moment and we did something 
because we could and yeah. it's Ooh, been I a huge oh, a yeah. huge difference for our cultures for the way we sleep and get up in the morning and to the community and, it, and it's really awesome it's scary at times still because it's different and new but right. that's what i'm realizing in the super adaptive world that we're moving into that you alluded to earlier this is right where i want to be yeah i want to be wings wingman oh, so that's uh, that. there you go yeah. You know what, you guys are incredible because, like he said, you know, you you got up and you thought, what can I do to just make everything better in the midst of when people oh, didn't, yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't mm. leave the house, you know, I'm not sure if you know this, I know Charlie knows this, but um, I had breast cancer last year. Oh, and yeah. so, Terrifying. In, you know, yeah. um, about the di- worst time diagnosed, ever. <laughs> diagnosed in January, and so the quarantine actually came at a good time for me. Because oh, I have a little yeah. bit of FOMO, so I don't oh. like to be excluded from <laughs> yeah. things. And so Ooh, with, oh, from events. Right. right. But everyone had to We're shut down. We're all FOMO. Yeah. Oh. It, was it was hard. Everyone had to shut down. And so I didn't feel like I was missing out on things. So it actually, it, it, it was a blessing in disguise for me. Um, but, you know, there were times of last year with everything that was going on, it was scary. And oh. so to your point... Charlie, it is scary out there, and it was scary because you have to think, what am I bringing home if I come in contact with someone? Oh, and yeah. if I'm out at the hospitals where people are ill, you know, what's what's the impact to my family? And so it's, it's really interesting. I feel like 2020 and how companies have adapted and changed and pivoted, that's going to really set you apart yeah. from companies that just – you know, they have a model and they can't de- deviate from it and this is all we can do. And then I just, I'm, I'm seeing things, I'm seeing failures coming out of that, but I'm yeah. seeing great success. Well, it's like they're not focused on the big picture. Right. They're focused on the day-to-day tasks. Yep. And so you talk about adding meaning to stuff. And oh, I yeah. think, um, you know, you guys are in the business of the ultimate tacos and the ultimate roofs, right? That's right. The, that's the day to day. You're swinging hammers. You are swinging tacos. So, yeah. <laughs> and so that'd be a great shirt, by the way. I, oh, swinging. There you guys go. Well, we talk about that. You know, hammers. Wayne lives in a world, an economy of tacos. I live in an economy of shingles. He donates <laughs> tacos those tacos a lot. I donate those shingles a lot. And, and you know, Wing and I have known each other a long time. And I remember Wing saying, and we 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 have partnered in ways that we can, which is events here and there. Okay. And Wing, I don't know if you remember saying this, but like five six years ago you would just say these things like, hey, you know, someday we're going to be doing this a lot more together. You know, hey, just, you know, no matter what it looked like in the moment, right. like, because we all, we're both, we don't say no, we say maybe to everything. And so a lot of okay. things, fi- like they yeah. fizzle Figure or they out. turn into something even better or different. Yeah. But yeah. we've both been open-minded that way. And, huh, isn't that something that those thoughts become words, become actions, become, wow, not just things that are done, things that have great impact. And have taken off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and we can draw we can draw that into the HOA world. I mean, how yeah. many managers do we know in our industry who've said, you know what? Yes, this is the way we do it. This is what civil code says we have to do. This is what my company says we have to do. <laughs> yeah. But how can I do something different? Yeah. And like this podcast, I don't know of any other property managers in our industry that thought, hey, I'm going to call up Mike Perloff and say, let's do a podcast. And you know, you, you were saying to me earlier, Charlie, about the events that I do at Portola Springs and how much your family enjoys them. And it's... I mean, it's incredible. You know, we, we're thinking outside the box. We're doing different things. How do we encourage people in our industry to start thinking in those terms? How do I do something different in my day-to-day job to make it amazing or impact someone or, you know, build a relationship that's maybe strained with a board member to turn a corner and make it a better experience well, for everyone? And let's face it, a lot of times community management can be like banging your head against the wall. Your your day to day stuff. Oh, sure. I mean, we joke about the, the the fires we put out, but it's not. You know, it's it's sometimes hard to find that bright shining light in your day to day HOA right. management job when you're only getting calls if a roof is leaking. <laughs> you're only getting calls when a building's on fire. You know, no no one's calling you to be like, hey, it's a beautiful day. Let's go to Wahoo. Or, you know, like, it's not. So how do you find that meaning that you guys have found and the bigger picture stuff in your day-to-day job? Right. What, 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 what if you could live in a world, what if we could press a button and live in a world where intent mattered? Not what you said. We can say, we can put words it. upon words and twist. Yeah. To, but what if, what if we live in a world where intent 
matters and it's pure. And, and what, imagine being, and I, I don't want to get emotional because I, I thought I wasn't going to do that today, but, but what if you could be a leader that never said anything bad about anyone, no matter what? Yeah. What if you could be that guy? And you know, and, and I don't want to overly butter up Wayne, but you know, <laughs> I hang around this guy all the time and he doesn't, if, if there's a, a sarcastic yeah. uh, mood coming in, he doesn't even hear it. I don't think he hears that. Instead, he compliments so somebody bad. in the moment. Oh, and I, I think that, that. In, in his mind, I have chills. I have chills. I love that. Karen, and, you know, that's someone. what I want to build. And, and Wayne, I was listening to him speak about five, six years ago at uh, one of the clubs, Pacific Club, I think. Center Club. Center Club. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Susan I Rossi wouldn't want to miss that. Center Club. <laughs> and it was like uh, one of the which was, was it? The women women in, philanthropy fund yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. Women and he was you speaking. did something that is hard to keep yeah. track. Well, he was speaking. He was the keynote, and, and there was it was yes. all women. There was like a couple hundred Except women. Charles. And, and me. Yeah. I was there with the women. <laughs> And and by the way, they were all just uh, just every time he moved, they moved with him. And it was he was telling stories about water polo and about Brazil and then about who, how he built his business. And and I was looking around and I go, wow, could I tell those stories? Because you guys know I want to tell stories. Oh, yeah. And so Wing really taught me then that this that's what matters most because now people really know him and they know that each that things matter to him and every and he doesn't waste words and and he, and he tells stories because stories we can relate to and so what that taught me is how to communicate better it took me a while we and I started hanging out yeah. but yeah and I, and he gave me courage to be to show maybe to say what matters more and it's not that I go on political issues I don't I'm very down the middle but but I go on things that matter that build the bridges all the way to everybody and it's partially because a network includes people like Wayne. Right. Well and how amazing would it be to be in a board meeting where you're having maybe some personality differences and you were able to take what you just described in your personality wing and basically convert board members into seeing the, that we're here for a united purpose. We are yeah. here for the betterment of the community, and we can lead this charge in a positive way instead of all of the negativity that comes. And I think in our industry, I, I think if you, if you took a poll of 100 managers and you asked them, what is your greatest stress? I, am, I would be shocked if they didn't say the intense negativity that comes around running an association and right. it doesn't need to be negative because it can be run just like any other business and you can have a positive attitude you can have a group of people that are excited to be together instead I feel like the negativity is kind of this little cloud and I would love to see that what you just described sitting in a room and you see the little negative cloud coming over and then all of a sudden we teach people to just redirect the energy and then we need wing at every board meeting. Well, and Wing's, coming with, yes. Wing's coming with me. Well, no way. It well, yes. It's starting to matter now in our industry. You know, communities in our name, and yet so many people play for themselves and themselves only. And, you know, and I don't like to acknowledge that, even to put it out there. But I've learned by focusing on the greater good, playing the long game, which yes. is donating the risk for Habitat and having over a hundred managers come and donate time with us to do that you know we've done that and do, do, playing the long game it's starting to let us be heard when I used to go to board meetings 10 years ago and you know I, I you knew me 10 years ago yeah. I had the same ethics that I have now Absolutely. I mean we're gonna do what's right no matter what yet I would go to a board meeting and there would be somebody looking at me across the table accusing me of a, a kickback or something oh, sure. which right. I know occurs but you know it shocks me that they think it would happen with us or accusing us of something really horrible and I, and I go why how could they say those bad things about me you could yeah. sue somebody for the thing Things that they say about you in a board meeting, the negativity that you bring up. But today, when I go to a board meeting, it doesn't happen anymore. And I'm going to tell you what that means to me and my team, to not be accused of awful things. Because by the unruly, untaught board members, there are a few of them out there, sure. but, but it means something to show up and, and to be respected. And you know how that shows up on the quality of the roofs? There's a 54% attrition rate across companies across the roofing industry. That means over half of the million workers are going to work for another company next year or leave. And yet, you know, at Antis, we've been able to hold almost twice that na national average. It's dipped a little bit since COVID, but it is, it's amazing how that shows up in the quality of the roof. And when purpose shows up in, you know, in our story, and when people answer the phone and they go, well, we're keeping family safe and dry for 30 years and they know why we exist, 
then what happens is it does show up in the roof. We say this thing, every nail matters. You know, it does. Every nail, if it goes in too far, goes in, that 30-year roof is suddenly an eight-year roof right there. Yep. And so and nail. there's, there's 200,000, or I think we figured 400,000 parts in the average roof we install. And so I know it's the same with tacos, too, and burritos. When yeah. I go there and I eat that sauce, that amazing Brazilian oh, yes. hinted <laughs> sauce, and then the vegetables... And I don't know how, I don't want to ask questions yeah, too much, but <laughs> no, the vegetables are not, they're not raw, but they're not all the way, they're not plastered. They have that real What's alive the word taste. For that cooking? There's a Fresh. word. Al dente. Al dente. I was close. I was but close. But I mean, it's so, nobody does that perfect every time. I don't know their secret, but they do it. I don't want to question his magic. Yeah. I just let him do it. But that stuff shows up. And, it does. You know, I'm going to say one last thing because I've been talking too much because I do this. No, before. no. But I want to tell the story. I have these masks that we're leaving you. And these are. Oh, I'm going to tell are, the story better than you can. Oh, no, you tell <laughs> it. No, I, I, yeah, you tell it. I got to see it. Yes. Because I was with them. So it was it was it June or July. It was in the middle of the summer. Okay. And this is where everybody delivered. We're always wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Sure. We're in East LA at some hospital, and he shows up and he's got slacks, shoes, and a collared shirt. Uh oh. And I'm like, You missed the memo about the I'm like, dude, what are you doing? It's only hundred degrees. <laughs> right. Right? It's noon. He goes, well, you know, after this, I got to go to Santa Monica. Okay. I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, my manager, whatever it was, I got to put out a fire. I goes, okay. what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to get our renewal. Uh, you know, we're going to lose this deal. Oh, wow. I'm like, well, thanks for showing up. Mm-hmm. I mean, remember, he could have just gone straight up. Right. To his- Instead, Absolutely. he's there with us. We deliver to the, you know, emergency crew, and off he goes. A couple hours later, he calls. He goes, you're not going to believe this. I'm like, what? He goes, well, I'm walking the roof with a guy from the HOA. And for 30 minutes or whatever long he's up there, he doesn't ask him one question about the roof. He's talking about the mask the entire time. No what are way. these logos on your mask? Yeah, why are you? Yeah, the taco guy, KLOS. What is this all about? Yeah. And Charles explains to him, it's a California love drop. He just came from a hospital, and I don't even remember the name of the hospital in East LA. Oh, wow. 30 minutes later, he goes, I think we're going to send you a contract for a renewal. No way. So I'm like, what happened to you getting fired? <laughs> right. Didn't happen. Love it. And I think at Good that point. moment. I forgot about that part. <laughs> and at that, but the best part is, I think at that moment, that story, because I knew we've been doing what delivers for three or four months at that moment already. And about every week, he goes, man, my team is not behind me because they don't see what the hell I'm doing hanging out with that you. Big, what is yeah. that going to do with my work? Sure. Right. So, so having to be able to tell that story to his LA manager, who yes. then told all his guys, because then guess what? That stupid thing that he does with Wayne. Is working. <laughs> right. Well, you know, when you're a visionary like Wing and I, yes. we our team have, I mean, yeah. we have a lot of ideas that don't come to fruition. Some people hear, some people hear ideas as, oh, contingent ideas. Some people hear ideas as, what do I have to do? Right. And okay. so, so I do scare some people with a different disc assessment than me. And so, uh, but yeah, it, it's. It was amazing. So that, to me, you said, okay, you know what? Something. I knew there would be a benefit to you at some point. Yeah. Besides you helping me yeah, and yeah. you getting your bucket filled with... So did you feel that way from the beginning of Wahoo's Tacos? Did you always have that big picture mentality of, um, you know, sometimes the stuff that you... Doesn't directly sell tacos, no. but it can help you, you know, build that goodwill. And how, how'd, you, how'd you start with that? It was basically like when we joked about, you know, it being a wingman. Because when we joke about... When I was a kid and I played water polo... I wasn't, I was the smallest and slowest kid that ever played. But in order for me to get playing time, I figured, you know what, I'm never going to be the high school. I'm not going to be any of that because I'm too small, too slow. But if I can look the people around me look better, oh. be the assist guy, be the wingman, I'll get oh, playing time. Yeah. So that became my strategy. And I did everything under the sun That's to do that. And it got me playing time. So I went from being the worst, second worst kid on the team to getting to play three years of varsity. Wow. Which doesn't happen. That's so funny. I work my behind off, but more important, I made everybody around me better, right? Yeah. So that always became, so I always looked at things, I, I don't understand, but I know this feels right. At a certain point, what we're doing is going to matter the way he says it. Right. And it did, totally unexpected. 
on a day that was 100 degrees, he's wearing slacks. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And it yeah. worked. <laughs> That's right? so cool. And, what about and, the socks? Do those ever come up? You're on a roof and then someone goes, what are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, sure. They come up all the time, but they're they're often misinterpreted as Waldo or yeah. something. Like, oh, yeah. 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 And, and then, but it gives me an opportunity to quickly tell people why I wear them, which is my board position at Ronald McDonald House. And there's a lot of stories, you know, I have that pertain to socks that I wear for four years, I got 40 pair. Oh, so, awesome. yeah. so We won't go into those stories right now. In fact, between us, okay. we could like sit here and tell, in fact, you guys too, we could be here for two days. Oh, that's what we, we said. said. We said, <laughs> well, like, we we said this might be a four hour podcast, it might be 40 minutes, and you know, we'll see how it goes, but I, I wanted to tell you both, um, you know, from my perspective, it sounds like regardless of the business that you're in, you guys go out of your way to make people feel valued. And yeah. that's your employees, that's the people around you that you come in contact with, and that is huge. I mean, that fuel for people is lacking in a lot of companies. But, but you know, I gotta, I gotta give people, I gotta tell you why I think that occurs, because I used to be of a different mindset. It didn't necessarily feel like there was enough at one time until I had no choice to try. And so when my intent became pure and all of a sudden in my mind, these words started coming up, things like, I'm gonna err on the side of generosity with every stakeholder. It means every employee, every client. Like, what if there was enough? There was enough, you know, that everybody, nobody was shorted. Right. And, it's, and I think that the mentality that I started my business with, I have to be shrewd. You know, no, honey, no, boss, no this, no that. You know, and, and, and I've learned that no is not a word that I can afford to say. You know, it's, it's a maybe to everything. And I think having somebody that's doing that next to you is really powerful because you get to see it working in moments where you wonder if your team believes it. I, I'm very, very out there. I'm going to say what's on my mind because my intent is pure. Or you're going to hear it and you're going to know it. When it's not, I might say something that's a little off and I'm going to be called on it. You know, the other day I was in a board meeting and one of the boards I serve on, I got a phone call today from somebody who works for this board and I offended a board member maybe a little bit in the way that I was giving feedback. And I, and I think that that doesn't, it hurts my feelings a little bit like, oh, I have a responsibility to make certain that everything that comes out of my mouth is helpful it is necessary, and, and, and this is a case where maybe I hadn't done enough research to give the information. I'm not, I'm not going to take back everything I said. I gave a view that I meant to be valuable. But I feel today that if my intent is pure, I can speak to anything, and, then I, and I can be responsible for anything that comes out of my mouth. I never said things like that 10 years ago. I mean, and, I don't, and I'm not going to go tackle major social things, man. You know, that's just silly right. if I decide that's my, my, my goal. But... But wow, there's a lot that we can do because most people I know, for example, believe that everybody deserves a decent place to live. So Habitat for Humanity is a good use of my time, you know? Yes. Most people that I know think that Ronald McDonald House, they have that feeling that it's unimaginable to ignore sick children. So that works for me. And then this new, this new lens that the world is now discovering where, oh, we're not as safe as we once were. There's different threats. And all of a sudden there's these people all around that are out there that protect us for real. You know, we exist to have to keep families safe and dry, but frontline people at hospitals, police and fire, they're keeping us all safe. Absolutely. And now we have a chance to go out and say, wow, thank you very much. Without you, we don't know what we do. And they need to hear that, yeah. you know? So it's a, I'm in a very grateful place as a CEO because the world is so adaptive we're moving into. There's a lot of experts in the future that talk about our brains. Our brains having lived where we've lived, even the Gen Y, Gen Z, beyond, I don't know what's after that, they, uh, they, their, their brains are not, are not uh, there's, we're going to build this exponential, exponentially adapting mindset that we don't have yet. And so the best way that we can get there is to put people first, to trust them, and to build not only inside your company, but I believe in this inside-out model. Right. You know, I've done outside-in where you're doing outside, but the people don't believe. That doesn't work either. Oh, You've got a, this inside-out model. And so it's a, it's a powerful place where we get to be today, and I don't want to change it for anything because I used to grind these 80, and I used to, you, you saw me in that day. Aaron was working like... He worked one 98-hour week. I believe it. I a 98-hour week. I remember the, the boat parade during the holidays. Yeah. 
and I, I think you guys were sleeping on the boat because you <laughs> your goal was to to reach out to as many companies and managers as you possibly could. And I, I remember being so excited because this was all new to me. Yeah, coming, you're right. That's coming to the was. HOA industry, I was like, wow, it's a big party all the time. And this is <laughs> Yeah. This what is about wild. the Antis party? Oh, the Antis party. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wayne, have thing. you heard of that? I've heard. Yeah. It I was heard lots of stories. Legendary. That's Legendary. right when I got into the industry. It yeah. just started. And I remember I was a vendor. So I, I, uh, I wasn't a sponsor of the event. So I didn't have, you know, the ticket. And I just sat outside and I was like, one day. <laughs> I am going to be at the <laughs> Antis Roofing Party. Well, because that was around Expo, right? Around March? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think I hadn't even been at Keystone a full year yet. But I, I mean, I remember entering the boat, the guys downstairs sleeping, thinking, wow, these are really hardworking guys. And I, anytime I've ever been to Antis, everyone there is genuinely happy. And I, as an employee... That to me speaks volumes, and the fact that you, like you, you were talking about the natural attrition of our industry. I think it's true of roofing, but it's also true of our industry. Property management side is probably even higher, but especially lately. Yes. Well, so with the yes. younger generation is what I'm trying to say. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of the people that have been doing this, I feel like there's like a. A There's mark a where once you pass that mark, you're usually okay. You're in for life. You're in for life. You're not leaving yeah. us. That's kind of true. No, but thinking yeah. about the people that still work at Antis today and the people that worked there five, ten years ago, I would say a lot of them are the same. And yeah. I've come to rely upon the fact that the people that are going to stick around there, I mean, they're going to be there a long time and they're happy. And I'm sure that the, when the, the same is true same for thing you. With I mean, you know, you have so many restaurants. I, I don't know that I've gone back to the same one enough to see the same faces, but I I see them everywhere. They're not closing, which is incredible because we've seen we've seen companies grow like huge, and then you just see one by one the stores are closing. I mean, there's an Albertsons closing in Irvine, and I thought, how is Albertsons closing? Like that to me is like what's going on, and so. It's a huge testament to you because obviously you have a lot of really happy people working for you and you have happy customers. I mean, the food's amazing, so that's like a given. Yeah. So a tie-in back to the party, um, Wing probably heard about us through Flashback Heart Attack because oh. they have a table oh. at oh, yeah. one of these coast, at your mall store. Yes, yes. Uh, at South, South Coast. Coast they have yeah. their own, they like, have their own table. Signature and then, table. You know, we, they were the, the, the breakout band for us there. We were, were, we were hiring so those $30,000 bands, Jim Blossoms, Sugar Ray, and then we brought you know we brought them in. They're a third to spend, but major they are fun. So, so yeah. fun. Yeah. You know every fans. song. Yes, yep. they yep. were great, and they they developed quite a cult following. I think because of you. I mean, a lot of managers like made the crossover, and they started following them around. And you know, I I really hope that the, the you know bands like that can come out of COVID stronger and you know I, I love flashback heart attack I love the reflex and I'm like waiting for the reflex to come back out and like do more concerts and stuff I know my daughter um, is really into music and she's just devastated that there's no concerts right now <laughs> she's a music business major in New York and she's like mom I need concerts back <laughs> Yeah. But I think we all need them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Quick story on Mike. When Mike first entered the industry, we're t- around the time of those of those concerts, we would have. He worked for twenty four hour restoration when you first oh, went there. So yeah. And I remember when you first went there. You know, he was a, he was trying to do something to be noticed, and he thought like <laughs> we did. You know, right. and you know how we put up wing. We put up those easy ups and right. events, and you know, to, for me they're a pain in the butt. For you they're easier, but we put. But, Mike shows up with this triage tent, like from Mash. I mean, it is like, and it's got this major stretch. I don't know how you do it without a jeep pulling it. It's got this major taunt. You could have a whole medic evac unit. I mean, it was crazy, and and it was a big red cross. It was an incredible, incredible that he was willing to put that up and take it. Well, that's just what I was gonna say. I thought that thing would be so epic. I got to my first golf tournament and I read instruction one, and I immediately called the office. Send like eight guys like, right now. Oh, like, I, don't, yeah. I don't know how to build this thing. I was no, freaking out. You owned it though. You owned it. Is, yeah. is accurate. And I, I'll never forget either. The first golf tournament, I got it set up, 
and I had his head to toe dripping and like grease all over. <laughs> I remember me. that. And I'm like there to shake hands. I'm like, hey everybody. They're like, yeah. That's right? when I started trying to hire you. I think when I saw that, he was out there sweating, putting up that tent. Working it. Awesome. Working it. Anybody who has Mike Perloff working for them is very lucky. Oh, thank for you. For sure. Way to make me for blush. For sure. So I would love to. What what would what piece of advice would both of you individually? I mean, you come from different sides of the the table, but. What would you tell people in our industry specifically? Maybe someone that's struggling, maybe someone that feels like, maybe this isn't the industry for me. You know, this is, it, it's wearing on my soul. Like, what advice would you give them to just keep, kind of keep them going? To stay in the HOA industry? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I would say that, you know, I've been disappointed in our industry in the past. In like, you know, the roofing industry, I didn't, I was disappointed in it for a time. And then the roofing industry reached out and said, hey, Let's bring best practices, and you know I'm very involved at the highest level in the, in the roofing industry. And so the, the HOA industry, I expect the same thing. I expect uh, what matters most to all people, the community to really show up. And, and I've been disappointed, honestly, but I think it's starting to happen now. I think that people like you, and you are bringing these questioning everything type venues together. And I think that, you know, the world is making us pause. We're starting, we have to ask what really matters. You know, I'm wearing a United to End Homelessness shirt right now. I'm on that board. That's not a comfortable board every day for me to be on. Sure. But I do it because it's the right thing to do. Because communities in my name and because my company exists to keep families safe and dry. And how can I exist to keep families safe and dry when I ignore the homeless man at McDonald's? Oh. And by the way, I got I to gotta tell these real stories. I was at McDonald's. It was, it was inauguration day and I wasn't really paying attention because I was busy. I raced to McDonald's. I ordered my food. I went through the drive-thru and I felt somebody there right after I'd ordered my, my filet of fish, 10-piece McNugget and Diet Coke. I oh. saw somebody there and I couldn't make eye contact because he was homeless. And I was he standing there for? But then I felt bad because I didn't acknowledge him. Right. And I believe everybody should be acknowledged. And so I went in and I got my Diet Coke. But when I went to get it, she handed me a Diet Dr. Pepper. Oh. And then a Diet Doc, a, a Coke. And I had two drinks and I was going to tell her I, I didn't order two, but I didn't want to wait for the change. Yeah. So I just said, thank you. And then I went up to the to the uh, to that thing to get rid of the trash from yesterday's McDonald's meal. Right. And when right. I went out there, I rolled down the window and I heard this voice and it shocked me. And it was that homeless man. He said, hey. And then I, I, I gathered myself and looked down and I had an extra drink. And I go, hey, you thirsty? He said, yeah. And I gave him, I go, he wanted Dr. Diet Dr. He said, sure. And are you hungry? And I gave him my McNuggets, which I ordered extra. And then he started to walk away. And, and then I, I said, hey, what, what's your name? Because I know to ask his name today because I know that every one of these people are people and they have a story. Yes. Yes. And he said, my name's Sean. And, That's cool. and, and I told him my name was Charles and I wished him a good day. And that That's was a good rad. moment because I feel like yeah. that, that's me, you yeah. know, because I used to ignore him because it was convenient right. and now I don't. And, you know, and that was on my inauguration day memory, which I wasn't paying attention. But as I left McDonald's, you know, I heard, I put it on CNN and I just heard a flute playing yeah. and it kind of gave me an old moment of what America used to mean to me before everything went kind of nuts. <laughs> You know, right. and, and, and I had a peaceful moment because I've ignored homeless people and I'm not ignoring them now. And maybe that is something, you know, that means something. Yeah. This is a difficult place for me to show up, but I show up because it matters. And I think if you show up because it matters, then people will know you. And if you're in money over the next 10 years, if you're in business, I'm sorry, over the next 10 years just to make money, Good luck. Right. You better exude with why you exist. You better know your stories because there's there's been so much bullshit out in the world. Pardon my language. There's been <laughs> so, much BS, yeah. so much BS out in the world. There's so much inauthenticity out in the world. And it's out there where regardless of where you sit, well, the world is craving authenticity. Yes. And that just means your real story. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It means... Showing what you're trying to do and being honest and showing in its imperfections. It's like never colors. been more important to be vulnerable. And I, I need to... No, no, no. That's no, so we right. perfect. And I think not only um, today, it's so immediately obvious when someone's not authentic. Oh, you can I see them coming from a mile away. It's right. like, okay, the, I feel bad for those poor solar salesmen I because know. they walk around my neighborhood and I see them and I go, oh gosh... I gotta tell these guys, like, here I go. What's but, those people are trying to I have that super empathy for solar. Well, so here I am. I am about to buy solar because the, the finally two guys came up and didn't, they did not talk to me about whether or not, you know, what my electric rates were. And But they started talking to me about my BMX trophies in my garage, <laughs> which is embarrassing. I have them. No. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> you like that stuff? I, I felt bad throwing them away. It was like, it felt 
sad from my childhood if I just threw them away. So anyways, this guy just starts talking about my BMX trophies, and he's not there to sell me solar. He's there literally to help me, and, and you can see immediately when someone doesn't have yeah. that authenticity. They're trying to make a connection, because that's what yeah. this is all about. I mean, think about it. You know, there, however many management companies there are in Orange County, uh, we all do the same thing, right? We write word uh, packets, we run meetings, but how do you make a connection with people that set you apart? How do you, you know, get those boards saying, oh, I want that person to be my manager because they actually listen to me and they made an effort to understand, like, our goals for the community. And I'm sure it's the same for you, Wing. Like, yeah. it's just, I mean, let's be honest. There's tacos everywhere, right? There's tacos everywhere. But how do people pick you? Like, the thing that we talked about, you know, like, from within, it's like we take care of them. And, 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 and to my point, I, I laugh about because, you know, talk about BMX, right? There is this amazing thing in the surf community now going on about wave, man-made wave pools. Oh, yeah. Right? And the premier... Can you get us to Kelly Slater? Oh, I've been there three years. What? What? You <laughs> man. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, I what? was the first outside vendor allowed to surf food there at three years ago at, yes. at Kelly Slater's pool. Is it perfect? So, Sorry. I, you lost perfect. me. <laughs> it's perfect. I it's mean, perfect. It's like, it's what dreams are made out of, right? It's yes. like all whatever, right? Okay. So imagine, you know how far it is from here to Lamore? Yeah. It's about, give or take, four and a half to five hours each way. So imagine driving. Without traffic. Well, yeah. yeah. So imagine driving five hours to get there. And one of the events, so I invited two of my franchises, my Santa Barbara partner and my Fresno partner because they serve. Yeah. So why don't you guys come out? Because as part of this day, it's a charity thing. We're going to raise a couple hundred thousand bucks. And I'm covering almost like a quarter of all the expenses. And I'm going to get, in exchange for doing all that, the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm going to get a, 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 my heats, right? Yeah. And I never asked what time, whatever. And we were kind of playing all day. And all of a sudden, after lunch, we realized that my heat is going to be doing dinner. Yeah. Now, imagine this. No. If it were you, <laughs> would you be cooking? <laughs> no. Nope. Or would you be surfing, I, right? I quit. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm so I looked at Jeff and John, and I'm like, you know what? I drove the farthest. Because you, Fresno, it's 30 minutes from here. Right. You, Santa Barbara, it's like three, three and a half, whatever, right? I'm going to prep dinner while you guys go surf. Oh, wow. And they both looked at me and just, you drove all the way here, and you're going to drive five hours home when we're done with dinner. He goes, yes, I'll be back. Good don't worry about you. it. I got you guys. Wow. I don't know of another guy besides Charles and I that would do yeah. that for our guys. Yeah. That's incredible. And so, that's what we do. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not claiming I would do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying. If I'm next to Charles, he's going to do it. He and I'll be cooking. Well, yeah. so, and how do you, uh, I guess, lead by example, but yeah. how do you guys, you know, get your teams and your, um, you know, everyone to join that same spirit? What, mm-hmm. what do you do to encourage that other than is it just lead by example right well at least start with happy people that's the oh, first thing because you can teach them all the other skills i mean roughly if they can do construction whatever he can yeah, maybe teach to them have, how to do yeah. be able to lift a hammer yeah and, well and you know some, they lift a spatula but after it. that if if they if you start with people that have a i call it an attitude whatever they have a chip on their shoulder whatever that they quote unquote don't feel like they should be doing this because they should be doing something else uh, well, we're, I, I, we don't, we can, you can go do something else somewhere else then. Yeah. Because we want people to, that, for the time being, whatever, it's a year or 10 or 30, you're going to be here with us and you're going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know? So we know some best. people are not going to be here forever. But, I mean, I have now, I mean, George was our art guy. His mom is one of my supervisors. So he nice. literally has been working, his mom has been with me, I think, 25 years. Wow. Right? So that, to me, shows. And... I always make a point to say, hey, George, I really appreciate. So whenever things come to the office, because we always get stuff sent to us, I always make sure, hey, George, why don't you take this? Why don't you take that? Right? Because nice. Right? That's how what we do. Because so yes, sharing the wealth, sharing the whole thing, the experience yeah. and all that. And, and so not only verbally telling our people that we really appreciate it, I go out of my way to make sure that Angel that works for him, who is his, George, I always tell them, hey, Angel, I really appreciate what you do. It's awesome. You make us look huge. Yeah. Isn't it so funny how I just... tip your guys good when I buy burritos from them. <laughs> I assume they might know who I yeah. am, you know, yeah. and so I don't say anything, but I want them to know I appreciate yeah. I them. Love that. So I heard, I forget who, someone in the industry speaking about how 
a lot of times that what you said of, of telling someone how great they are goes farther than even a monetary, oh, yeah, you know, like you, you could tip someone a hundred bucks and that's awesome. Okay. Let's, yeah. well, maybe not cash, cash speaks, but <laughs> you know, some people will stick at a job longer if you just appreciate them genuinely. Genuine. You can't just tell them, you can't yeah. just say, Hey, good job. Um, so I have a rule that I don't follow. This is so I, I, I kind of live in this I, the ideal version of myself. And one of the things I find that when I talk about what's not working, it comes out way more animated and powerful than what I mean it to. And partly it's because I'm always that cheerleader. And so people sometimes hear stuff, even if I said it better in a negative way. So one of the things I've learned for me, I have a rule that I'm not saying I follow perfectly. My rule is I can only compliment I can't criticize. Now, if you once, nice. if you would see me years ago, I constantly was like, oh, that's not going to work that way. You know, I'm just crushing people's experience. Yeah. And now, instead, I, I, you know, I don't do that. Instead, for the most part, in marketing, you'll, they'll definitely see me, Wings see me, hey, why are you doing it that way? You know, you, you see me do it. But, but that's not okay for me to do that. I recognize that's not going to give me a better result. And I'll give you an example. I have a six-year-old son who plays baseball, and I'm struggling with how to teach him baseball. And, and when I'm, I notice he, he, he wants to play with me until I tell him to choke up on the bat or something. Right. You know, it's like what he hears when I compliment him, like, hey, there's, that's a the good, worst. that was a good smile on that swing or whatever. That's a way better thing for me to say than, than you know, watch the ball, you know. And so, and so true. You know, and it's true. Well, what if he's running the street? You gotta say something. Then, well, yeah, but if, but if you give him enough positive reinforcement before, he's not gonna run into the street, and that's that's the mentality. So my rule for that myself is that, and I love that rule for myself that I can say that. Now that's that right. means that everybody can call me on it the moment I don't do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's okay. So that's all the the big district managers listening. That's the big takeaway. How do you lead by positive reinforcement? And in the HOA industry, there's a, a huge void. I don't even know if it exists of positive reinforcement. So it's how hard. It's hard. I mean, I'm a gold star kid, and I, I've, I've always been the, I needed the chart with the gold stars, and it's yep. translated, yep. you know, into my adulthood. Yep. And I've had this conversation with my supervisor. I said, I am a gold star kid still yep. to this day. I need you to tell me, wow, that was really great, Kara, or you did such yep. a good job on this, and oh, that's amazing. And I, I shut down when people don't like my ideas. And I'm not saying everyone has to take all yeah. of my ideas, but I've been in a lot of organizations, a lot of, you know, uh, groups and, and I- Committees. Commi that, yeah. Thank you. That oh was the word I was gosh. searching for. So committees. many committees. And I'm like, how about this? And I'm so excited about it. And it's just like 10 people no. tell me why it's not going to work. Yeah. And for me, I'm just like, boo, like a little yeah. tip flower. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take my talent somewhere else because I'll find a place where someone says, like Mike said, Kara, you know, Kara called me up, let's do a podcast. He says, that's a great idea. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea, but now I know it's a really good idea. So I have to work in an environment where my ideas are received. They don't have to necessarily be implemented all the time. But to your point, as soon as you start to tell me, like, you're, like when you're playing with your son, you're not doing this right, or you need to move your hand. You know, you need to do it this way, and that's when I'm just like, yeah. literally, Shut down. brain shuts yeah. off. Shut down. It Ooh. stops being fun. Well, that and that too. I, I mean, I do love this industry. I love my job, but when it stops being fun, that's yeah. when I'm like, I have to find something different. Yeah. I can just give a look sometimes, like, you know, to someone <laughs> like Corey. You know, you know, Corey's intent. Corey. You know, Corey's such an awesome person. Oh, she's incredible. Yeah, but you know, but yeah, I, I can just sometimes come in steaming and I. I, I yeah. <laughs> By the time so I get up to her, well. she's like, whoa, oh, oh, yeah. oh. you know, yeah. it's like I, I have to learn to be responsible for every action, and that's that's a. I'm in, I'm 58. I feel like I'm 38, but I'm 58. Yeah. I, I wish I could have learned this at 38. You know, I right. wish I could have learned that, but I but I know it now, and it's really valuable. Well, and I think that that's a good point too for this industry. To Mike's point about the kind of the age gap and these these new generations that are coming up. Like we need to be able to teach them these things earlier so that they're not saying, oh, now I'm 58 and now I know how to do it. Yeah. You know, I, I got into this business when I was 20. And so, you know, I'd like to think that I acclimated quickly, but I certainly know a lot now, 25 years later than I did when I started. So yep. hang in there, property managers, you can do it. Yeah. And, and the thing is also, I mean, you know, when we talk about, you know, I, I was talking to a nurse the other day 
and she looked very white, but she was half Filipino and half something else. And, and I'm looking at her going, hmm, don't look anything like, I mean, I would just assume you were born and raised here. And we were talking about culturally how people, if they don't understand the way you do something, that's weird. Mm. Right. Because I don't do that. You do that. That's weird. Right. But imagine from their perspective, well, man, you are weird. <laughs> so the thing with that is, is if we can all, I mean, the, the, the cliche get along is the fact that, hey, accept the differences. Right. Because guess what? The people in Asia do this a lot different than you do in Europe and a lot different in South America. Yeah. So you kind of, right? And I tell people, the grass isn't greener over there. It's just a different shade of gray. Right. Oh, great, but, right? but that's a great point. Around Wayne, you, you act, it's almost like you speak more languages and you understand more concepts. Yeah. Because we are, you know, anything is possible. Absolutely. Anything is possible. This works over there. You know, you have friends, you have multi-international friends, I mean, from cultures and businesses. Yeah. And, and we show, that shows up in cases of backpacks for kids. That shows up in cases of Hawaiian chips oh, yeah. for for yeah. our families. It shows up in Monster Energy, Hint Water. It, we it's it's amazing how that shows up. So yeah. so I think a huge takeaway is having a bigger meaning and having that um, you know thought in your mind. So I want to talk about the California Love Drop. Um, yes. I want to talk about kind of how I know we started to touch on <laughs> how it got started. But I want to tell people, because a lot of our managers and stuff want to do bigger things, want to get involved. Um, how can people get involved? What are you guys doing? Um, Wayne, let's... The let's... best thing is go to our website, californialovedrop.org. Look at our schedule. Contact Charles, because everybody knows how to get a hold of this guy. Yeah. And they say, hey, how do I get involved? Because at the end of the day, it's... Unlike the old model where you donated money at a gala golf tournament, anything it you can think of. Yeah. You never got You're to see involved. the end result. You're not involved. This, you are impacting your little dollar. You can see the nurse right when you do it. Yeah. And because we are so resourceful, literally on Saturday, I, which I never told anybody, we gave away $20,000 worth of those bags. Wow. They're $100 holy a piece. Holy Two, we gave to, 200 to first to responders. Nurses. Yeah. These were Wonder Woman branded bags made by Jujube. One of our nice. So we gave away to every nurse. So, which is funny. That's if, I don't huge. know if you were paying attention. We gave a few away because we didn't have anybody outside. And before you know it, like all the nurses went, ran in and goes, guess what? You got to go out there. There's something that we've never seen before. Cool. And they were coming by. Because we, yes. said, well, we opened one box and we opened. All of a sudden, we were, the boxes were gone. Amazing. I mean, we had 10 boxes, 20 per box. And by the end, we could have given a few more. I mean, but all the nurses, you've never seen them that giddy. Because yeah, they knew it sounds you can go online and go, this is $100. They were giddy about that. And they were also giddy about something else. And in fact, I, I have a video of a nurse that I took that we all have to send her one. It was the, the ice roller. Oh, the ice roller, yes. Oh, what's the, yeah, what's the, the brand, our friend? Um, oh, God, it's Wendy's friend. Yes. Uh, we got to do, yeah, so CaliforniaLoveJob.org. And doesn't you can get have involved. Yes. yes. Yeah, and, so, and, and can you attend them or do you? Um, Absolutely. You okay. know, donate whatever you can do if you have yeah. a product, whatever. And we'll find ways to either thank one of your relatives at a hospital, one of your neighbors in case of, uh, what's it, Fountain Valley Hospital. The, the head nurse was his neighbor's wife. So yeah. we've like, we, right. we've been to San Bernardino, San Diego, L.A. So let's thank the people that are closest to us. So, right. so that's exactly what you're doing. It's the most grassroots thing. Yes. I was so so. I, I got to attend one. Yeah. And like you said, uh, sure enough, one of the nurses that I know, personal yeah. friend, goes, "No way! I work right next to that hospital. Uh, like where?" So she commented, "Where's my burrito?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and but it's so cool. So watching the nurses come out, they get a burrito, they get a drink, chips, um, yeah. you know, all the the gifts. So, um, so yeah, I would say this: if your company has an interest, because a lot of stuff shut down, you know, sure. that way you show up where it matters. Right. If, if if one of your areas that matters is like the fire department, like they, you know, when I home was evacuated, troops from all over the state came wow. and protected me, yeah. so I'm motivated there. Right. Or, or if it's the police department, now we know from giving love drops yeah. to the police department that there were times this year that was the only positive 
feedback they had mm -hmm. where they were really uh, they were really suffering there for a while in sentiment out there right. and, and and so if, if that's it or if it's the frontline people in health which we go to hospitals we go to homes and you know if, if you have an interest then let your company like Antis does and like so many other brands do sponsor mm -hmm. a drop or we can bring a couple hundred burritos or a hundred burritos mm -hmm. and yeah. all this product to say thank you and you can send some representatives and show up with us that's yeah. what we want that's because awesome. that's where the impact happens and by the way where the impact happens is where that thing happens where we're just alive the aliveness occurs fulfillment's yeah. the word I'm looking for yeah. but I like aliveness better because that's <laughs> what it felt like when I was afraid of what I'm supposed to say as a leader wondering what to do in the moment when I showed up and I saw those nurses after that double I felt alive and that's the that's pinching yourself for a good reason there. Wow, I want to remember this. So and you said something earlier that I want to kind of touch on more. And I heard somebody, and no names mentioned, but I talked about the California Love Drop. And a sponsor in our industry um, just said, well, how does it tie into the HOA industry? And, you know, it, sometimes you kind of can have that narrow-minded. Yes. He, he literally asked me, he or she, I should say, to make it nice. <laughs> he or she asked me how many community managers are there. And I went, well, actually, no. So, I, you know, I'm just getting involved because I think it's a really cool thing to do. And he, he that was all his thought, you know. And yeah, I want to encourage, you know, our business partners and people that are in our industry to not think of how many community managers are going to be there. What's my return on investment? What's, you know, right. don't think that. It's you know, the long not, game. They're playing the short game. They're playing the short We're game. We're playing the long game. When you, been, well, when you start playing the long game, there are short returns. But man, those long returns compound. Yeah. Well, and it, it also, it can apply directly to your short game. Like personally, um, you know, if I go do California Love Job and I'm with a client the next day, how are you today? Dude, I feel epic. I just did the California Love yeah. Job. Like the story you just told oh, me on the roof. story. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, so and not cool. not that I'm doing that for a short game yeah. sell, but that's, I think we think a lot alike of we're we're actually genuinely do it because we want to but for those of you that just play the short game um, you should find a way to make it apply to your life because the big picture and the long game is so much better and so much um, you know that's it's where you, it's you, at. You can't buy gratitude. No you can't. No. Well you know and it shows up if you're if I'm grateful it helps my people be yeah. grateful. They mirror my feeling. If I'm fearful they'll be fearful. Yeah. Uh, one quick story that it's off of one okay. the, the first love drop was a Hogue Hospital. And nice. each time we've done three drops near there. The beach. It's also <laughs> Hogue Hospital ironically had the very first United States COVID case. January 21st 2000 a Wuhan guy came yeah. down and that was it. Wow. But the first love drop was there a couple months later. <clears throat> so we went back and Jeff Hetchell is their chaplain. chaplain. Very outgoing guy, an amazing guy. And I know I'm not the only person he's done this to because he's that guy that wants to lift people. And, and by the way, he's told us that who they're treating there today, they're, well, this is a couple weeks ago, I think the numbers are coming down now, but they were so busy, they weren't even treating the patients, they were so busy treating the staff. Oh. But when I showed up at the last drop, he came out there, remember he was walking toward us and he was so happy. Well, Jeff came over and he pulled me aside, which I'm sure he pulled some of the people okay. aside, but he pulled me aside when no one else was around, and he said, Charles, and last time he had given us a challenge coin from, from his department, but this time he gave me another challenge coin. I think he forgot they gave me another challenge coin, right? <laughs> he said, Charles, come here. He said, I have something. He reached in his pocket and he says, this is the Irvine Police Department, Ch my chaplain's, my personal challenge coin, and I'm going to give it to you because I want you to always remember where you were when it mattered the most. And he, right the way, we weren't touching anybody. There was patients outside with ventilators that day. It was scary. Wow. And he, he reached out into that big hand. He's got a hand bigger than mine. And he grabbed it hard. And, and I, yeah. I, I sat there like a little kid and I started crying. I didn't know what to say. And he walked away, you know, but, it, but I'll never forget where I was when it mattered most. And that is a story I will always remember. And I hope I, in fact, I, I intend to carry that coin with me, but yeah. I forget to, you know. Okay. And uh, But it's a, it's a powerful memory. And that's why I'm really grateful that I get to be a part of this. This is how yeah. I feel. It rubs off around me. And my team, yeah, they always are a little afraid of me at first, but they believe and they're excited. And now it's fun. We're using Wahoos as our pre premier vendor for a lot of different food activities, you know, custom meals and stuff. And it's very exciting. 
Well, I was going to say, I bet you there's people on your team that you have that same inspiration. You come up and you go, hey, great job today. And you hand them something and they, the same thing as you free, break, cry. And, um, you know, so I'm sure you do the same for your, your people, which is awesome. When you hang around Wing, though, he'll, you end up, he'll take you to places like, here he is trying to keep his restaurants open. In the very beginning, it was really rough. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then we go over to Orange County Bakery and I'm walking in there and I'm just kind of in that... I've been locked up for a few weeks, you know, back in last April. He takes me inside OC Bakery where they are the suppliers of all these restaurants and these restaurants are not open now. So what they did is they had all these little stations in there for this Indian restaurant, for Boss Cat restaurants, which we used to go to. And so I was able to go there and buy like uh, pork rinds from Boss Cats for all my guys in the field, you know, yeah. because they like that. Nice. In fact, Wing actually came over there and goes, hey, you want to buy some stuff? And, and I, I wasn't even getting it at first because I'm just in my fog and I'm like, oh, maybe. And then he goes, hey, I'll loan you some money. He hands me a couple hundred dollars. And then it hit me. It hit me. It's like, oh my God, this is my opportunity to like help these other businesses. Some of them have helped me in the past. And so, you know, every time I've got in there, I, I fill up a box of food and I go back to my office and I, and I hand it out to people. And I remember one day I came back with all this stuff and there was something I really wanted and I can't remember what it was. It might have been my, my uh, bag of chicharrones. But I, <laughs> but I was handing everything out and this and everybody wanted I remember somebody wanted this thing that I wanted and, it, <laughs> oh, and it, felt, it felt so good to give it to him, you know? Awesome. It's like that was as good as it gets, you know, yeah. when you get to do that. Because sometimes there's another part of me that we're talking about that maybe used to show up more that maybe sometimes does show up in our industry that I have to lay up more gold right. for me right. and there may not be enough for my children and their children. I will, I will turn them into little monsters. I mean, that's kind of was the old plan and now there's this generous plan and, and yeah. you, you do that model that really well and, and, I, and I know that you know that I see that and I, and I, I appreciate that. Well, we both of you guys do and you're doing it for the right reasons and like I said, it's, not, it's totally off obvious that you're doing it for the right reasons you love to do it and it's working you guys are crushing it it's so inspiring Karen and I we talked about like holy moly Charles and Wing are coming next week these guys are larger than life Um, so we look up to you so much and I'm sure everyone does in the industry Um, it's just cool to see you doing it making it happen yeah it's a very inspiring and I I think that if nothing else comes of this experience today I feel inspired and yep. it's it been an absolute pleasure to speak to you guys and listen to your stories. And I wish we had six hours because I'm sure you guys would have so many more. But <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we we'll do. Hey, Elon and Musk and... just went back on Joe Rogan. We'll do <laughs> yeah, round right, two. Yeah, yeah. And like, <laughs> part two. I mean, part, part two. Amazing. You guys yeah. have been f- fantastic, and I can't wait to see all the things that you continue to do. And from my wife Don Antis, who is very active in our community and just an yeah. amazing person. Uh, she says thank you very much for being the best property manager Aww, ever. You really are. So she sweet. loves you. And I hear about Kara all the time from <laughs> no, my wife. Good. They're talking all the time thank about you. issues in the neighborhood. She's the sweetest. We're you know we're uh, co-admins on the local Facebook page. So <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. that's tough. Yeah, well, I didn't you know. know. Yeah. yeah, we just started that SoCal HOA next Pros. door. Right. Yeah. Ad- yeah. Admin is no joke. It is no joke. I yeah. have an admin for the Rancho San Margarita page, and we have 13,000 members, oh, so yeah. it's definitely oh, no joke. Okay. I realize yeah. it. <laughs> I didn't know what I got myself into. Like, right. Oh, my gosh. So, awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys thank so you much. Guys so much for going this on. This was amazing. Visit CaliforniaLoveJob.org. Yes. AntisRoofing.com. Yeah. Is yeah. that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. AntisRoofing.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, we can't wait for the and next one. And go buy some tacos. And, and follow, yeah. follow me on LinkedIn. Follow oh, yes. uh, Wings really active on all is a lot more social media than I am. Thank you for following yeah. me on Instagram. Oh, I you. felt like a celebrity was following me. I told Mike about it. I got she so bragged. Excited. You should have seen it. She came here. She uh, actually knows. Said, Wings "Does Wing follow you? Because yeah. it follows me." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What?" So awesome. Well, thanks yeah. you guys so much. This was an absolute pleasure for us. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Boom. Thank you. That was gold.